Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this webinar on the role of radiotherapy in lung cancer management organized by Lung Cancer Europe. So my name is Alfonso Guaron, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Um, today, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our speaker, Dr. Virginia Ruiz, radiation oncologist consultant in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University Hospital of Burgos uh, in Spain. So, Dr. Reed, on, on behalf of uh, Lung Cancer Europe, I would really like to thank you so much for, for your willingness to collaborate with us and to share your valuable knowledge, uh, especially taking into account the, the tightness of, of your agenda. So, thank you so much on behalf of Lung Cancer Europe. So, um, before we get started, I would like to explain the dynamics of today's session in case this is the first time you join one of our webinars. So. During the first part, uh, Dr. Reed will give a presentation on today's topic, giving firstly a brief overview of the lung anatomy and uh, lung cancer to follow up with a comprehensive review of the role of radiotherapy in the treatment of the disease. Uh, this presentation will last between 35 to 40 minutes, and then we will have some time for you to ask any question that you may have. So even though I will remind this to you later, there are basically two ways in which you can ask your questions. Uh, if you would like to make your question using your microphone, you just have to press the raise hand icon on the GoToWebinar application. You just download it to join the session, and I will unmute your microphone when it is your turn. Or in case you would prefer to send your question in writing, just type uh, type it in the chat or in the Q&A window, and I will read it to the doctor when the uh, session is over. So being said that, and without further ado, I wish you all a very fruitful session. And Dr. Reed, I give you the floor. OK, thank you very much, Alfonso, for the invitation. It's uh, a pleasure to be here and uh, with everybody to explain the role of radiotherapy in lung cancer treatment. Well, this is me. I am Virginia Reed. I am here because I'm radiation oncologist, of course. And the radiation is my superpower to kill cancer. You can find me in Twitter in this address. Well, uh, this is an introduction, and we will explain uh, about epidemiology, anatomy, physiology, symptoms, the diagnosis, pathology, staging, treatments, and especially with radiotherapy and future challenges. Which is the epidemiology of the lung cancer? Every year, about one, uh, 470,000 uh, new cases of lung cancer are diagnosed in Europe, and this is increasing. It's the third tumor in the, uh, with highest incidence, affects more men than women, represents 20% of cancer deaths. Tobacco is the most important risk factor. It's estimated about 50% uh, of smokers will develop lung cancer, and the smokers are 20 times more likely than non-smokers. Uh, there is a clear uh, relationship between tobacco and cancer that has uh, caused a great social stigmatization. One-fifth of women and one-tenth of men with lung cancer are known smokers, and it's a silent tumor since it does not usually show symptoms until advanced stages. Tobacco is the first uh, risk factor in lung cancer, but there are other ones like uh, work occupations, exposure to asbestos, meaning textile or radiation. The frequency increases with age. It is more common in men, and there are also genetic uh, causes. There are families with history of lung cancer. Another burning diseases are have a relationship with lung cancer. Well, uh, an image is worth more than uh, 1,000 words. And here you can see uh, at the left a uh, healthy lung, and in the uh, right a uh, smoker lung very different. Which is the lung anatomy? Well, the lung are two organs located in the thorax and breathing is carried through them. Uh, they are separated by an area called mediastinum that is a space 
that is very important, especially in radiation therapy, that is the heart, the trachea, the esophagus, and large wood vessels. Air reaches the lungs through the trachea and the main bronchi. Within the uh, lungs, each main bronchus is divided in secondary bronchi, bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli, as you see, can see in the, in the image. Which is their physiology? When uh, the alveoli contains capillary, uh, when the gas exchange occurs during respiration. In inspiration, the oxygen enters to the lungs and this is absorbed. And in the expiration, CO2 is expelled to the outside. The lungs are covered by a membrane called pleura that makes this uh, function easier to contract and expand. How is this done, the carcin uh, carcinogenesis in lung cancer? The lung is made up of a group of cells that divide regularly in order to replace those that are already aged or dead. This process is regulated by a series of mechanisms that the uh, cell to start dividing when uh, others remain stable. If this mechanism acts disrupted in a cell, and control division begins, and that eventually will lead a tumor or a nodule. When the cell grows uncontrollably, they invade the surrounding tissues or organs and move to proliferate other parts of the body, what you know uh, as we call the metastasis. Which are the symptoms of the lung cancer? Well, as you know, we can have very uh, anodine uh, uh, symptoms like persistent cold, shortness of breath, bleeding with the cold, unexplained weight loss, repeated uh, respiratory infection make us a suspicion and also pain. You can see uh, all of this in, in this image. And how we diagnose uh, lung cancer? Well, we have different uh, tests to, to do it. Here you can see uh, a chest X-ray. You in the the right uh, the right lung has a big nodule that you can see in both of these X-rays. And here is the translation of a, a nodule in a CT scan. Uh, we can do we normally do a bronco bronchoscopy. Uh, we uh, entry to the trachea, to the bronchus, and take uh, a sample of, of cells, and uh, we can have the, the histological uh, diagnosis. But sometimes we have to uh, punch or to have uh, a needle to go through a CT scan to the tumor and get uh, a biopsy. Uh, the PET scan is very important for radiation therapy. It's a functional test that shows us uh, where the, uh, is the disease, not only the primary tumor. We can see if the uh, ganglionar uh, nodes are affected or if there is any uh, metastasis. And we make it in, in our routine, we make a, a we solicited a PET scan. Also, there are a relative new technique that's called ultrasound bronchoscopy. We can, it's a bronchoscopy with ultrasound integrated, and we can, we are able to make a sample of cells of the nodes. And this, if we have the confirmation with a biopsy needle, uh, we, can, we can know if the, the nodes are affected and this can change our strategy treatment. Which is the pathology of lung cancer? Well, we divide in two big uh, groups of uh, lung cancer that have a, a very different clinical uh, behavior. We have the, uh, in a 15%, we have small cell carcinoma. I will explain 
how it how is it and the other group of big group is the known small cell carcinoma and uh, in this group there are adenocarcinomas epidermoid carcinomas and big cell carcinoma the small cell carcinoma normally will stage it with uh, a clinical way with limited to thorax or stratigraphic uh, tumors. It's not a surgical tumor. It has a worse prognosis. The treatment of choice is concomitant radiochemotherapy. And after completing the treatment, normally we irradiate the brain uh, because it, it has, uh, it's very common to have uh, afterwards a brain metastasis. In non-small cell cancer, we use the TNM staging. I, I suppose everyone knows this way of staging these tumors. Whenever it's possible, uh, surgery is the lection treatment, has a better prognosis. And for not operable tumors, the treatment of choice can be radiation therapy alone or radiation uh, chemotherapy. Target therapies are playing an important role nowadays. Well, this is the TNM uh, in the NCCN guidelines. And which are the treatments for lung cancer? Well, we have surgery, we have chemotherapy, we have radiation therapy, we have target therapies as we talk about, but we have also radiofrequency in small tumors and endobronchial laser. I will explain about, about them. Uh, surgery is indicated in a stage one and two, and after chemotherapy, also we can use it in a stage three. Chemotherapy can be neoadjuvant when it's uh, before surgery, adjuvant after surgery, concomitant with radiotherapy in the same time, and palliative just to alleviate symptoms. Radiation therapy, we can use it as a radical treatment when it's unique treatment, especially in non-small, in, in very small non-operable tumors. We can use in pancose tumors. These are tumors uh, that vary height in the in the lung, and before surgery, we can use the uh, radiation therapy. We use adjuvant uh, radiation therapy after surgery in some cases. I will explain about that and concomitant uh, when uh, we use with chemotherapy. Also, there is a, a palliative way to irradiate just to relieve symptoms. Uh, there are targeted therapies. Uh, nowadays, uh, every day is going up a, a new drug and uh, because uh, we know more the uh, biological uh, behavior of these tumors. And there are a lot of uh, different uh, immunotherapy and target therapy for advanced disease that has changed a lot the natural history of lung cancer. And it's a, a very hope treatment. Uh, I also speak a little bit about radiofrequency and endobronchial laser. Uh, we can use radiofrequency with very small uh, tumors, very peripheric. Mm -hmm with uh, this technique and the endobronchial laser is used when you have a, a tumor in the bronchus that uh, collapses the lung and we need to uh, expand that that uh, that lung or that part of lung and we can use this this technique normally it's a palliative technique but uh, it's very very useful in some times well we will speak about radiotherapy in lung cancer, what, how, when, and why we have to use this, this treatment. Well, what is it? Uh, radiation oncology is a medical surgical specialty that uses ionization, ionizing radiation for the treatment of malignant tumors. It's based in radiobiological scientific knowledge, and it's a, a mainstay of the cancer treatment, like surgery or chemotherapy. It has more than 20, uh, 100 years of history and its evolution, evolution has been exponential. Well, radiation is everywhere, but uh, we use uh, this one, 
uh, the X rays and the gamma rays in the ionizing spectrum for the treatment. Uh, what are the ionizing radiation? It's an invisible form of energy. It spreads on the form of uh, electromagnetic waves. Radiation exists naturally. The sun, uranium, radon, the cosmic radiation. Every time we go in, in a flight, we have cosmic radiation. Radiation can be produced in an artificial way. When we use low X-ray energy in radio diagnosis, for instance, or we can use a high energy X-rays that it's made up by the linear accelerators. And also we can use particles like protons that uh, probably uh, you know. But some people imagine like, uh, like this, no, like a, a raw chicken. But this is not the way that we, we really treat the patients. We, uh, our, our treatment is based, as uh, I said before, with the radiobiology. The radiobiology is a science that studies the biological effects that occur in leaf beaming after the special energy from ionizing radiation. Well, here you have uh, a normal cell that impact the ionization radiation. And we can do, uh, if we impact to the, to the heart of the cell, that is the nucleus of the cell, we kill it and the, the cell death. But it's possible that the radiation goes uh, to the cytoplasm, not to the nucleus, and make a, what we call a subletal dose. Here, the, 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 the cell is in a senescence, what we call it, it's something like that, and they are asleep. No reproduction, and there are a, a, a different changes in the cell. And it's able to kill, or it's able uh, to live. When we use very low dose, like in uh, when we make a test, uh, test X-ray, it's healthy. It's nothing happens. Oh. And here in the right uh, draw, you can see uh, the double chain of the DNA. And when the, uh, there is an interaction, direct uh, direct interaction, uh, you can break this chain. But also there is an indirect uh, interaction with the water that makes peroxide oxygen and uh, free radicals that can uh, break this uh, chain. Well, uh, I'm, I don't want to be very uh, technical about this, this concept, but it's important to know that uh, there are different response mechanisms to radiation. Uh, we have to know about a little bit of radiosensitivity of the cells, the oxygenation, redistribution, reparation, and repopulation. And these different ways that uh, make uh, the radiation to the biology of the cells it's the part that uh, makes uh, our uh, treatment uh, in a good way. That's what we want, to kill the bad cells. But we have to know uh, when this began. We have the, the lack uh, of, of the history of Rengen, Madame Curie and Becquerel, that Rengen uh, discovered the X-rays, Madame Curie and Becquerel, the, the, they discover the radiation, the uranium, the radium, the polonium, and that's why uh, I'm here. The first patient treated with radiotherapy was in 1896, and two months later, only two months, uh, after the X-ray discovery. The first technical uh, advances of radiation, of radiation therapy began in the 50s, the 1950s, with cobalt units and the first linear accelerators. And advances have led to more effective and accurate radiation therapy in the last uh, few years. This is the timeline of the radiotherapy from uh, 1895 uh, since nowadays. And here uh, in the last 20 years, it has grown exponentially. Well, this is the, the TNM that we use 
to know uh, when we have to, to treat or not to treat in uh, radiation therapy. But uh, as you can see, in a stage one, we have uh, a role. Uh, we can be definitive with the, uh, what we call the is A, B, A, T. In uh, other stages, we have also a role in a stage one, one B. This is the, the, the in CCN guidelines. And you can see that everywhere there is a role of radiation. We are also in a stage three, and the same happens with stage four. And also, after surgery, and limited stages, everywhere. Then radiation therapy has a role in every single stage in small lung cancer and non-small cell cancer. There are two different ways to deliver radiation, but the most common is external radiotherapy. But we can also, uh, in some cases, use the brachytherapy. We use the, directly the, uh, the radiation element to the tumor. There are different sequences of, 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 the, of the treatment. We can use it radical and unique. We can use it preoperative or neoadjuvant. We can use adjuvant uh, or uh, postoperative radiation therapy concurrent with chemotherapy or palliative. And there are different techniques in radiation therapy. 3D was the first most common uh, way to radiate uh, lung cancer, but now most of them we use uh, modulate intensity radiation therapy or what we call AMRT, always guided by image. And uh, in some times we can use also uh, uh, arco therapy at the same time we can shoot the uh, the tumor in different ways a step and shoot or we can uh, make that the country uh, of the unit moves at the same time that radiates that's what we call a uh, vmat or volumetric arco therapy of modulated intensity when we have uh, a few uh, brain metastasis, we can use a radical treatment, what is radiosurgery, cranial stereotactic uh, radiosurgery, or uh, in some cases we can use SBRT or is ART, body or ability radiosurgery uh, to tumors that are non-operable. What do we do? Like all doctors, cure sometimes, treat often, and comfort always. That's what Hippocrates says. And this is our patient flow in radiation therapy, yeah? what we do in a, in a radiation therapy unit. First of all, we have a first visit. It takes about one hour to speak with the patient. We make the history, we explore the patient, we see all uh, the tests done, and we value if the patient is fit for radiation or not. The, the next step is the simulation. This is very important for us because we make a, a CT scan. Uh, the patient has to be immobile, has to be very quiet. And also we can monitor the, uh, the breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step is planification. We prescribe the dose to the tumor. We draw slide by slide uh, where the tumor is. We are helped with the uh, CT scan and the PET scan. And our uh, physicists uh, do the, the planification of what we planificate. Afterwards, in, we can validate all the treatment and we have to verificate that the simulation and the treatment is in the uh, same position and we do it every day. 
This is a treatment console. We can uh, see all the time the patient. And uh, the, the next step is the follow-up, not only in the treatment, just uh, before. And we have to be to to see all the results and the side effects that the patient has. But um, it's, we are very impressed with the, with the techniques and with the beam, but the most important thing is the team, because we, we don't work alone. We have physicists that work close, uh, very close with us, uh, radiotherapists that are the, um, are the, the the person that uh, makes the, the treatment every day. We have nurses, we have assistants, we have administrative, we have engineering for uh, keeping our unit. There are a lot of, of people working around a radiation therapy. Which are the future challenges? Well, the uh, smoking restric restrictions, information and education strategies from childhood to prevent young people to start in the smoking habit, the increasing and current incidence of lung cancer among women should be supported by implementation of information and smoking cessation programs, because it's very increasing in, in women, this, this, this tumor. The development of a specific early detection for lung cancer so they can be identified in earlier stages. This is very important for uh, for us, uh, for being, uh, for improve our results. It's important to have awareness programs about the symptoms of the disease, especially in the case of smokers, who should know the warning signs by to go to the doctor immediately. We have to collaborate to achieve new advance to help the level of survival and cure increase. There has been gradual improvements in recent years, but patients can only benefit from them if they guarantee access to such treatments and diagnostic methods. I defend the equity in access and advances in diagnosis and treatments for all patients, regardless where they, they reside. Commitments to allocate more resources for prevention and awareness campaigns, research in early detection, as we uh, talk about uh, before, diagnosis and treatment programs, more flexible budgets, including healthcare and technology and their replacement. It's very important for our specialty. Definition of clinical, radiological and molecular criteria that will identify individuals with a higher risk of developing lung cancer, together with a lower developing of screening programs. Incorporate multidisciplinary teams in a generalized way in all hospital centers. The coordination between pneumologists, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, surgeons, pathologists, psychologists, social workers is very important. And this is needed with a real shared decision with the patient. Uh, more challenges or excellent uh, challenges that we have with the current advance of the ECT and uh, uh, electronic medical history. We could have a unique history, we had health navigators figures, access to platforms uh, with a structured and quality information. We need also studies, studies with big data, small data, real data and artificial intelligence, offer more psychological and emotional support not only to patients, but uh, to the families, and even for us, for the health professionals. Uh, patients and families and friends are the central axis of the daily work of the associations like yours, like Luce. Uh, we have Alfonso and us work. I am the co-founder of Encore. And this is a, a, a nice project to respond to the human needs in oncomatology and Radiotherapy always focus in the person. You can uh, uh, visit uh, this this web if you if you want if you have interest about. Well, uh, for finishing, which are the take home messages? Radiation oncology is a medical surgical specialty with more than a hundred of years of history. 
the evolution of this specialty has had exponential growth, especially in the last 20 years, thanks to the improvements in the field of engineering and informatics. It represents most of the mainstays in cancer treatment with surgery and chemotherapy. And radiation therapy is a local regional treatment. We are very close to surgery, but its role is uh, increasingly relevant in metastatic disease. Radiation therapy is one of the safest cancer treatments available. You can see all the steps we have. And radiation therapy allows to preserve organs and avoid mutilation. Radiation is a very personalized and comfortable treatment. And radiation therapy is a treatment that requires a high level of technical competence due to the rapid technological advances. Radiation therapy is a curative treatment. The curative potential in radiotherapy increases synergically with other treatments like surgery, chemotherapy, immunotherapy. Most of treatments are not unimodal, are multimodal. Radiation therapy is based in radiological knowledge, as we can uh, see uh, uh, before. And radiation therapy is highly cost effective. Side effects of radiation therapy, this is the, we are very aware about that, uh, are known and treatable. And ending this, uh, this talk, uh, this speech, uh, one never noticed what has been done. One can only see what remains to be done. That says Madame Green. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you can uh, visit uh, my Twitter, or I have this is my mail, or even my my web. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Doctor uh, Green. I think it's been a great and very comprehensive. Uh, presentation and i'm pretty sure that our audience has enjoyed that too much and and uh and it's been very clear i have to say uh and people have been very active sending questions here i would like just to remind uh all of our attendees that there are two ways in which you can make your questions if you would like to make your questions live by using your microphone remember that you can press the raise hand icon and I will unmute your microphone so you will be able to um, to make your questions live. Otherwise, you can use the Q&A or the chat window and I will read the questions to Dr. Ruiz. So I will start by the first question that we have received and is about proton therapy. And it says, does proton therapy provide any advantage compared to classical radiotherapy for the treatment of lung cancer? I think you have you have mentioned something about it, but maybe you would like to 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 answer that again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in lung cancer, especially in central tumors, we have uh, different organs at risk uh, that it has the, the the limitations for our treatment. Uh, Protons is the uh, next step in, in accuracy, but isn't a still a uh, high evidence that it uh, to has superiority of other techniques like photons uh, with IMRT. Uh, but probably it has a, a role in ray radiation, but we need more, more studies for, for that. Thanks a lot. So, uh, next question says, um, my father has been proposed to undergo stereotactic body radiation therapy. I have read about some side effects and toxicities associated uh, to this treatment, such as pneumonitis or hemorrhage. And this person asks whether these side effects are common or whether they can be easily handled. Well, first of all, we, we don't need to, to be scared by radiation therapy. It's a very safe treatment. The only problem with SBRT is when we have a, a central tumor that is very close to, uh, to blood vessels or to heart or to bronchus. Normally, we need uh, two centimeters from the central axis to, to treat. And even if it is a central tumor, we normally uh, fractionate the, the treatment. We don't need to do in only one fraction. We can do is BRT is a very accuracy technique. 
that we can do in one session or four or five sessions. And normally when it's a peripheric tumor, we don't have uh, many, many side effects. Only it happens with, with, with central ones. Great, thanks. Sir. Next question is related with uh, tobacco and smoking. I think it's an interesting question. It says, is there any evidence that radiotherapy is more effective, effective in non-smokers compared to smokers? Well, there are not not high evidence about that, but if if I I, I try to to think about uh, reoxygenation of the the tumors, the tobacco. Uh, what it, it does is makes the, the cells epoxic and the epoxic cells are radio resistant and that's how probably they are more resistant to, to, to radiation therapy than known smokers. That's probably the, the answer of that question. Great, okay, thanks everyone because I'm, I'm seeing some other questions coming in. So I'm just, if you just give me a second and just putting them in here so yeah so next one that's has radiotherapy shown to have a greater results in certain subtypes of lung cancer like those with certain mutations like ALK positive ROS1 EFR or it responds similarly independently of the of the subtype I, I don't know this question <laughs> Uh, probably we need more more studies to to know that in in, in chemotherapy or, or the targeted uh, treatments we know the the results but we don't have this specific answer. Okay, that's thanks a lot. So, uh, yeah, next one says if I understood correctly. Can radiotherapy be a curative option for a stage one patients who are not eligible for surgery? Yes, yes, we can use the SBLT uh, for for non-operable tumors less than five centimeters of of volume. Yes, then. Um, next one here says is CyberKnife or silver knife, a suitable method to treat lung cancer? Well, the silver knife is like um, Da Vinci <laughs> in surgery. Uh, it's a it's a robot. It's another way to to make the radiation therapy, but it's uh, it has a problem for 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 big tumors. If you have something very small, it's it, it is very it has a very accuracy mm. and, and uh, what, what is um, interesting in this technique is that can move uh, through the how the tumor moves what we call tracking and this but um, with we can do it also with with uh, uh, other techniques it's just a, a different way to to make radiation That's cute. So, it, yeah, and, and it's curious because now you, that you mentioned this two more moving and things like that. So the next question, it's a little bit related with with that. Uh, it can, it's related with the with the simulation part that you mentioned. So the question says, is there a possibility that the tumor grows between the simulation stage and the first radiotherapy session happens? And in that case. How do you make sure that the treatment is going to be precise enough? Well, as you have seen in the presentation, we make a verification and we make a something like uh, what we we call a, a, a CT scan during the treatment. And then if, if we see that the tumor is high, we make a rest simulation. And then and afterwards we, we begin again with all the process. We verificate every day yeah, how is the behavior of the of the tumor and even the if it's moving we can we can see it in in the same time. Okay thanks a lot. We still have like uh, 
two or three more questions come in. Um, yeah, and so, so it says, I think you mentioned that a little bit about the, the side effects, but it's um, it's a person asking, are there any particular short or long-term side effects in lung cancer patients related with the high dosage of radiation? Uh, I don't understand the so, 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 question. So, so I think the question is about the, which as, as the, the use of high dosage of radiation is, is high lung cancer compared to other types of cancer. Are there any particular sore or long-term side effects related to the, to the use well, of we, these? Well, we use uh, radiobiological tables that uh, have an is effective uh, uh, side effects. And it's not so important to... We know that for instance, the the most common uh, dose for treat lung cancer is 66 gray in into two gray a day. But we can use another types of 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 treatments. Uh, is so effective. This is a radiological uh, concept, um, but it's the same the same dose mm -hmm, that we can do, and the side effects are very very similar. That's why we see that they are so effective, not also for the tumor, also for the uh, normal cells. Okay, I can see that there are, uh, I don't know about that, many messages thanking you a lot for the clarity on your presentation. <laughs> and, and there is a person saying that uh, I like a lot your superpower. Uh, well done. <laughs> And she says, from my experience, I have felt some kind of isolated work when it comes to uh, my surgeon, my medical oncologist, and my radio oncologist. So this person asks that from your point of view, how in real world you find collaboration between all these professional areas? Like it's, I think this, uh, this is something that uh, I mean, I think many patients are very aware about chemotherapy or treatment more related with, with the oncologist, but sometimes it seems that, uh, that there is this um, kind of, I would say, unfair feeling that radiotherapy or surgery play a secondary role and that there is no many communication between between uh, healthcare professionals in different fields. So from your experience, how do you feel that? And do you think things are changing? And how do you feel I that? Think that's it. I think in the, uh, these things are, are changing. We have a uh a weekly uh, committee in the University Hospital of Burgos and we explain every case that uh, the, enters to the neurologist and discuss which goes to surgery, which goes to radiotherapy, which is uh, the sequency and we speak before. The only thing that uh, we we need sometimes is to have the, the patient in these committees also. <laughs> That they say, oh, well, I I want this or I want that. No, this is the the part that because we discuss for, uh, for the patient, but without the patient. That's the uh, that's the point. And now, and this this is a question of uh, I mean, there is another question coming, but from my side because we don't have much opportunities to discuss with the. Uh, with a healthcare professional, how do you feel a patient would uh, provide this input in these uh, working committees or in these working meetings? How, how do you think it can be valuable to have the patient experience into these, into these committees or into these? It could these... be interesting. We are not used to to have patients in in these committees, but uh, in ethical committees or in other, they have patients and. We have to to think about that, and, and patients are uh, have more information, and and now I think it's the world is changing, and in this in this way also, it, it depends on the patient. I, I I try in the the first visit to to explain everything, and uh, and and also that to explain to the patient everything no doubt no questions all the questions that need to to be answered i i will answer because i think it's important to have that that information thanks a lot too i have well we still have some time so if everybody else would like to send the questions we are still on time 
uh, but the last question that I have here is like uh, it's related to access to treatment. So this person asks, in terms of access to treatment, how do you feel the opportunities of patients across Europe to have access to the latest radiation? Let me let me just read it again. So how do you feel that patients? Uh, I, I I think it's some kind of grammar mistake in the question, but it's basically asking I, I think if I patient, yeah, if patients have opportunities to access the latest uh, radiotherapy technologies available in the market across Europe. I know that your your main focus is here in Spain, uh, but probably you you are in touch. I know that you are you are in touch with yeah. some other colleagues. So how do you think this level of access is? I, I think almost in Spain we have um, all the patients have the opportunity. Well, sometimes the other uh, the, uh, specialties or other uh, colleagues do not send us uh, on time the patients. That's the, the big problem sometimes, no? For instance, I have patients uh, for uh, other cities, not only for from Burgos, from Soria, from Valencia, and and sometimes because they are not fit. For, for traveling, they don't normally send us this, these patients, but uh, we have the, the last techniques we, we have now in, in most of the units of radiation therapy in Spain. I That's do great. not know Europe in, in every country. Completely. Yeah. I, I mean, for, for this person who asked this question, uh, I can uh, redirect you to our website, which is uh, www.lungcancereurope.eu. And at the beginning of this year, we published uh, a position paper on access to diagnosis and treatment. So we touch base on the access, not only to the diagnosis tests and, and, and different indication of drugs, but it's also a section for uh, radiotherapy. And even though it gives a global overview because it's very, you know, even within each individual country, there might be some difference in terms of access. And, and I think Spain is a good example, as well as some other European countries like Italy, which are different regions and different levels of access. It might give you a little bit of an overview of the current European situation. Mm -hmm. So I think there are no questions left. I don't know, we still have time. I don't know whether you, I think it's been a wonderful presentation, Dr. Reed, but I don't know whether you would like to sound like, let's say, a latest, a last statement to, to our audience, which I have to say is very thankful because there are, I'm still uh, receiving some messages in the, in the Q&A saying thanks. So do you have any last words to mainly patients and caregivers who are listening to us today that you would like to share with, with us? Just take care, and uh, we are here for for help you. And if you have any question, you you have Alfonso or my email or my web address, and I am very glad to to be to be here and to answer any question that that you have. I'm very pleased to be to be here and have this this opportunity. I hope that so, my English can be <laughs> could be understood. For everybody. <laughs> From a Spanish speaking perspective, it's perfect. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's that's great. So thanks a lot and also for your ability. I times are changing and, and right now I think we're moving to this new profile of doctor with so many uh, activity in social media and in the uh, in the web and things like that. So I think this is great for, for us as patients to to have the opportunity to have this direct link with with people like you, uh, Dr. Rhee, so thanks, thanks a lot. Um, so just before we, we close the session, uh, I, would write, I would really like to thank you again uh, for, for, your, for your clear presentation. It's been, it's been uh, as always, a pleasure uh, to, to listen to you and to gain all this, all this knowledge. It's, it's been very clear, but at the same time, very, very, comprehensive, very comprehensive. And I would also like to, to thank everybody attending uh, this webinar. So uh, before we close the session, I would like to remind you that the full content of this webinar will be shortly uploaded to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you will be receiving an email with the link and also you will be able to find information on our website and our social media 
channels uh, and also i i encourage you to stay connected to to these channels as well as to as well to our website especially uh to our member section so you are able to find your local support group in case you are not in contact with with them uh so far and being said that i really hope to meet you all again in our next webinar which will be around genetic testing uh, in december on the 8th of uh 8th of december you will be receiving an email shortly with all the information if you would like to uh to join uh, on this interesting topic that is gaining more and more importance in in the field of lung cancer uh, and apart from that, I would really like to wish you all a very, a very nice evening, Dr. Ruiz. Also, to thank you again for for your willingness to be here with us today. And just uh, being said that, take care, have a good evening, and uh, we stay in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.